Lady Bathurst is redecorating her ballroom in the French style. A little unpatriotic, don't you think? Miss Elizabeth Bennet. Good Lord, Miss Elizabeth, did you walk here? I did. I'm so sorry. How is my sister? She's upstairs. Thank you. My goodness, did you see her hem? Six inches deep in mud. She looked positively medieval. I cannot boast of knowing more than half a dozen women in all my acquaintance that are truly accomplished. Nor I, to be sure. Goodness, you must comprehend a great deal in the idea. I do. Absolutely. She must have a thorough knowledge of music, singing, drawing, dancing, and the modern languages to deserve the word. And something in her air and manner of walking. And of course, she must improve her mind by extensive reading. Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> May I have the next dance, Miss Elizabeth? You may. What are you doing here? Mr. Darcy, I had no idea we had the honour. Miss Elizabeth, I'm a guest here. Though you have no instrument of your own, you're very welcome to come to Rosings and play on the piano forte in the housekeeper's room. Oh, thank you. You'll Lynch. be in nobody's way in that part of the house. Frighten me, Mr. Darcy, by coming in all your state to hear me. But I won't be alarmed, even if your sister does play so well. I am well enough acquainted with you, Miss Elizabeth, to know that I cannot alarm you, even should I wish it. <sighs> what was my friend like in Hertfordshire? You really care to know? Prepare yourself for something very dreadful. The first time I saw him at the assembly, he danced with nobody at all even though gentlemen were scarce and there was more than one young lady sitting down without a partner. I knew nobody beyond my own party. Oh, and nobody can be introduced in a ballroom. Fitzwilliam, I need you. I do not have the talent of conversing easily with people I have never met before. Perhaps you should take your aunt's advice and practice. Mr. Darcy. Please do be seated. I'm afraid Mr. and Mrs. Collins have gone on business to the village. This is a charming house. I believe my aunt did a great deal to it when Mr. Collins first arrived. I believe so. She could not have bestowed her kindness on a more grateful subject. Shall I call for some tea? No. Good day, Miss Elizabeth. It's been a pleasure. What on earth have you done to poor Mr. Darcy? I have no idea.
Miss Elizabeth, I have struggled in vain and I can bear it no longer. These past months have been a torment. I came to Rosings with the single object of seeing you. I had to see you. I have fought against my better judgment, my family's expectation, the inferiority of your birth, my rank and circumstance, all these things, and I'm willing to put them aside and ask you to end my agony. I don't understand. I love you. Most ardently. I thought you were in London. No. No, I'm not. No. No, I we would not have come in some business with my steward. Yeah. I'm in Devonshire with my aunt and uncle. And are you having a pleasant trip? Very pleasant. Tomorrow we go to Matlock. Tomorrow? Are you staying at Lambton? Yes, at the Rose and Crown. Yes. To intrude. They said that the house was open for visitors. I had, I had no idea. May I see you back to the village? No. I'm very fond of walking. Yes. Yes, I know. Goodbye, Mr. Darcy. My sister. Miss Georgiana. My brother has told me so much about you. I feel as if we are friends already. Oh, thank you. What a beautiful pianoforte. My brother gave it to me. He shouldn't have. Yes, I should. Oh, very well then. <laughs> Easily persuaded, is she not? Your unfortunate brother once had to put up with my playing for a whole evening. But he says you play so well. Then he has perjured himself most profoundly. <laughs> no, I said played quite well. Oh, quite well is not very well. I'm satisfied. <laughs> Sleep. Nora, my aunt. Yes, she was here. How can I ever make amends for such behavior? After what you have done for Lydia, and I suspect for Jane also, it is I who should be making amends. You must know. Surely you must know. It was all for you. You are too generous to travel with me. I believe you spoke with my aunt last night and it has taught me to hope as I had scarcely allowed myself before. If your feelings are still what they were last April, tell me so at once. My affections and wishes have not changed. But one word from you will silence me forever. If, however, your feelings have changed, I would have to tell you. You have bewitched me, body and soul, and I love and love and love you. I never wish to be parted from you from this day on. Shut the door, please, Elizabeth. 